from struggling to get past 3,000 users to a rocket 400 million monthly users, the Pinterest co-founders converted a failing app to the world's biggest idea collecting and sharing platform. Ben Silverman grew Pinterest from a platform with zero ideas to a platform with over 240 billion ideas. The Pinterest story is proof that success things may not start well, but with the right mindset and belief, we can find people who share common ideas and passion and co-create with them. Pinterest was on the verge of collapsing with slow growth at its early stages, but the founders didn't give up. When things were going downhill, they went back to the drawing board to re-strategize. Hey everyone, and welcome to Booked, where we inspire others with inspiring stories. In today's video, we are going to go over the success story of Pinterest and talk about one of the founders, Ben Silverman. So make sure to watch this video till the end, because we're going to share with you the books that Ben Silverman read along his amazing journey. Books that changed his life and that may change yours. But before getting to the middle of today's video, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Pinterest is on a mission to help people discover the things they love. Founded in 2010 by Ben Silberman, Evan Sharp, and Paul Sciarra, Pinterest is inspiring millions of people to find the things they love, generate ideas for furnishing, recipes, or even fashion. Just name it, there is something for everybody in Pinterest. When we say there is something for everybody in Pinterest, don't just take our words for it. Pinterest has over 400 million monthly users who come to the Pinterest platform for their different needs. But Pinterest did not always have over 400 million people using its services monthly. It had growth challenges at its early stage. Three months after launch, Pinterest growth got stuck at 3,000 users. To gain early traction, Silberman contacted everyone in his network. He sent out an email to his friends, former colleagues and family. Nine months after the launch, it was still growing very slowly at 9,000 users. Growing for other traction was very difficult. Silberman thought of going back to his former job at Google, but the idea of going back to beg for his old job at Google didn't make sense to him. He also didn't want to fail the co-founders that resigned from their work to join him on that mission. Silberman and his team went back to the drawing board and redesigned a new way to acquire customers. They started by finding people who understood how to use Pinterest and used it often for their daily needs. Their next step was to organize local meetups at local boutiques, cafes, town halls, and other locations. These meetups helped them demonstrate the values and superpowers of Pinterest and converted those who attended as referrals to reach other people. Silberman used referrals and words of mouth to grow the traction of Pinterest. Failures are a blessing in disguise. As a child, Ben Silberman always thought he would be a doctor because his family were all into the medical field. Ben's parents and sisters were all doctors, so it was natural for him to follow that path. But Ben wanted to try something different. His first job was as a consultant in a tech company. It was during this time that the web began to evolve. Web 2.0 was taking shape, and Silberman wanted to be a part of it. He moved to California to be a part of this evolution. On arriving in California, Silberman's first stop was at Google. He worked in the online advertising department of Google. While at Google, he admired the innovations happening in the Bay Area and wanted to build innovative products. His aim of moving to California was to be a part of the evolving web, but Google would not let him work on the ideas he liked. Ben became frustrated and complained a lot. It was Ben's girlfriend that urged him to stop complaining and pursue his dreams. For Ben, this only meant one thing, quitting his job at Google. But as soon as Ben quitted his job at Google, a recession set in. Some of Ben's friends who wanted to quit their jobs at Google and join him hesitated. Ben Silberman later convinced an old school friend, Paul Sciarra, to quit his job and join him. He also met Evan Sharp, who was very enthusiastic about Pinterest and made him a third co-founder in Pinterest. But Pinterest wasn't the first thing Ben built. Before Evan Sharp came into the picture, Ben and Paul had built tons of iPhone apps already. The most notable of the apps they built was Tote. Tote was a shopping app, but it failed. The funny thing about the failure of Tote was that instead of people buying on the platform, people were saving the pictures of items on Tote and buying them elsewhere. This usage pattern may be discouraging, but Ben converted it into a multi-billion dollar business. Ben built an app for the exact thing customers are using the Tote app for saving pictures of ideas and products they want to buy or try out. The journey to 240 billion ideas. 
After discovering that most users were sending pictures of products to themselves instead of buying on the Toad app, Pinterest launched in March 2010. Initially, Ben and Paul raised funding from investors to develop Tote, but it was not yielding returns as expected. They immediately leveraged feedback from the platform and launched Pinterest. At Pinterest, things were still not rosy. Ben said he once approached a New York-based magazine publishing company to buy the early version of Pinterest, but they declined to meet up with the Pinterest founders. Through all this, Ben and his co-founders persisted, and their persistence paid off. Ben and his co-founders would later raise lots of funding worth over 500 million US dollars. And to cap it all, they went public in April 2019 at a valuation of 12 billion. Pinterest went from a company that had difficulties growing its user base to a 400 million monthly users. From being turned down by early investors to later acquiring over 16 companies. Today, Pinterest boasts over 240 billion catalogs of ideas shared and accessed by users and is valued at 12 billion. This journey may not be complete if we fail to acknowledge Divya Beshkaran, the wife of Ben. She encouraged him to quit complaining about his job at Google and launch his own company. Ben's wife also takes the credit for the name Pinterest. She suggested the name to Ben during Thanksgiving dinner in 2009. Lessons from Ben Silberman Ben didn't just become a Silicon Valley sensation overnight, there were a few principles that were instrumental to his success. On top of the list is that Ben always attracted smart people to himself. When he started Pinterest, he designed it to be an invite-only app, so he would only invite talented people to use the platform. Ben also asked his invitees to invite their talented friends as well. Even though Pinterest later made the app open for all users, Ben built its foundation using smart people. Ben also hired talented people who weren't doing any particular job in the company. He just needed them to bring ideas that could help in the operations of the company. Be like Ben. Surround yourself with super smart people who can contribute meaningful ideas to your business and personal growth. Another lesson we learned from Ben was his attitude towards customers. Like the old saying, customers are kings. Ben treated his customers with reverence. In the early days of Pinterest, Ben called each of the Pinterest users to learn about their experiences on the app. He sent them emails, invited them for a meetup, and even gave out his telephone lines. Ben did this despite the slow growth of users on the platform. He showed up every single time to ensure users are getting the best experiences. It eventually paid off as Pinterest user base grew to over 70 million the following year and currently over 400 million monthly. Book Recommendations Ben Silberman has recommended three books in the past, and we've highlighted them for your reading pleasure. These books cover the core areas that were pivotal in his journey as an entrepreneur. If you're looking to read some of the books that helped Ben on his journey, then you should grab these books. Together, written by Vivek H. Murphy, an article on Business Insider referred to Ben Silberman as a family man, and they are not mistaken. His family played a crucial role in his business success as he was very close to his family. His wife advised him to quit his job and pursue his dreams. She even came up with the name Pinterest as we know it today. Ben's mother was one of the biggest users of Pinterest when they launched. At the early stages of Pinterest, Ben will call all the users to get their feedback and improve the product. In this book, Ben wants you to learn how coming together as a family, community, friends helped him build a multi-billion dollar business. This book will teach you varieties of things like creating time for your loved ones, checking on a neighbor, or even taking time out to meditate, pray, or anything that will improve yourself. The Better Angels of Our Nature, written by Steven Pinker. Steven Pinker argues that humans are in their most peaceful era, in a time where the news media is propagating a world at war and conflict. The book shows an overall view of human existence and points out few indicators that we are more peaceful than we've ever been. Ben wants you to be positive and stay focused and know that things are getting better. The writer didn't only show that humans are in their most peaceful moments in history, he also shows how we can continue the trend of peace and coexistence. Salt, Fat, Acid, Heat Written by Wendy McNaughton We bet you didn't know that Ben was also a good cook. Ben reads this book to improve his cooking. The writer teaches you how you can make the best meals using the salt, fat, acid, and heat methodology. While you are going about building that idea of yours, Ben Silberman recommends you stay nourished and healthy. Grab a copy of his book by Wendy and improve your culinary skills like Ben. When the Toad app failed to gain traction, Ben noticed that people were using the app, but for a different reason. He did not despair nor give up. 
He focused on the bright side and saw an opportunity. Ben saw the light when others were seeing failure. He converted that little brim of hope into a multi-billion dollar company. Ben Silberman's story teaches us to always look at the bright side of things. It also affirms that consistency and persistence will always win.